ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. For weeks, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, had been pursuing one of the most vicious outlaw bands ever to terrorize the West, the infamous Burke Gang, a family which consisted of Job Burke, wanted for murder by every sheriff west of the Mississippi, his eldest son, Purse, a cutthroat who specialized in mail robberies, and his black-hearted younger boy, Sam. Striking with fury and audacity, the Burks left a trail of wanton pillage, gutted flaming homes, and murder unparalleled in the annals of the Southwest. Aroused men, certain that the Burks were heading east, prepared to guard their land with their lives. But Joe Burke had suddenly changed his direction. And in April of 1875, he and his sons reached the town of Crystal City, where they decided to stop and refresh themselves before continuing southward toward Mexico. Well, gents, what's your pleasure? Coffee for me, and milk for the boys. Milk for the boys? <laughs> you heard what he said? Yeah, sure, sure. Milk. I don't know as I like his attitude. Hello, Cal. Oh, howdy, Steve. Coffee. One cup of coffee coming up. Hey, uh, by the way, I seen your dad today. Colonel, I said, you're gonna be a granddaddy. You know, Cal, I'd be much obliged if you keep your nose out of my business. Oh, you would, would you? Well, listen here, you young galoot. This is turning into the whole town's business. Now, wait a minute. I ain't saying it's your fault any more than it is your dad's. But folks around here is getting mighty tired of you two acting like a couple of kids. If my father doesn't like the way I live my life, he knows what he can do about it. Like I said, I don't take sides. But if it was my wife having a baby and the old colonel sitting out there with half the money in the county, just waiting to spend it on somebody... You think I'd ask him for a red cent? Not if I was starving to death. All right, forget about the money. Think about Mary for a while. How do you suppose she likes having her husband and her father-in-law at each other's throats just when everything around her ought to be happy? Well, whose fault is it that things are the way they are? Dad wouldn't even come to the wedding, you know that. I also know it wasn't Mary he objected to. Would have been the same no matter who you picked. He wanted you to go into the army, Steve, like he did. A man has to live his own life. Sure he does, but it wouldn't hurt a man none to stick out his hand and say, all right, the fight's over. Let's forget about it. Hey, friend, how about our order? Huh? Oh, sorry, gents. Coming right along. Sure is terrible what the young generation is coming to nowadays. You know, I can thank my lucky stars for such two fine boys as my own. You wouldn't fight with your pappy, would you? No. Sure is terrible, too, that that old man is sitting up there with all that money. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Not even drawing any interest, except ours. <laughs> See you around, Cal. Sure. You think over what I said. Yeah. As Steve recalled the things the waiter had said, he realized that perhaps it was time to call a truce. For nearly two years, the senseless fight between father and son had gone on, growing more bitter with each passing week. And so, slowly, almost reluctantly, he headed for the home of his father. While behind him, unnoticed by Steve because of his preoccupation, the Burks prepared to follow. But Steve Webster wasn't the only man being followed that day. In a clearing a few miles to the north. Burks have breakfast here, Kinasabi? Yes, Tonto. Tracks still lead south. Do you think Burks head for Mexico? Maybe. But they'll have to go through Crystal City first. It's the only town in this area. And that means bad luck for Crystal City. It might, unless we get there in time. Come on. Meanwhile, on the outskirts of town, young Steve Webster drew rein before his father's house. A house as formidable and as lonely as its owner, Colonel Jonathan Webster, United States Army, retired. It's 
So it's you. Well, what do you want? I want to talk to you. I don't think we have anything to say to each other. All right, maybe we don't. Forget I even came here. Steve. Hold it right there, Sonny. What is this? Get back up on that porch. You're the three men I saw in the cafe. I said get back up on that porch. Go on. Steve. Up with your hands, Colonel. Masks, huh? Why, you dirty pack of thieves. Where's that money? I don't know what you're talking about. It's a pity we ain't got time to play games with you, Colonel. Now, I'm going to count three. And if you still don't know what we're talking about, your boy's going to get a bullet right in his head. One. Stop it. I'll tell you. It's in the bedroom. A metal box. You'll find it in the corner of a chest in the closet. Get it first. That the room? Yes. Well, now, that's more like it. I kind of figured you'd see it our way. You'll never get away with this. No. Did you find it first? I found it, Papa. Get the horses, Sammy. Okay, Papa. Much obliged, you, Colonel. Now, if you'll just get... No, no, you don't. Steve. Did you hear that, Tonto? Pistol shots come from that direction. Let's go. This one just got shoulder wound, Kimasabi. Him be all right. Oh, this one's not so lucky, Tonto. He's pretty badly hurt. Old man used ball and cap pistol. Boy wounded by same kind of gun. Do you think there's grudge fight? No, Tonto, I'm sure the Burks had something to do with this. I noticed the prints of three horses when we rode up, and they look like the same ones we've been tracking. Kimasabe. Blood on ground. One of Burks wounded plenty bad, too. Horse trail lead to stream at bottom of gully. Not possible to follow. Well, he can't ride very far in that condition. Right now, we'd better bandage up the old man's wound. Then hitch up the horse in the back stable to the buckboard and take the old fellow to a doctor. Me take him to Crystal City, but what about boy? I'd like to hear his version of the shooting. After I attend to his shoulder, I'll tie him to his horse and then follow him home. You find out in town where he lives and then meet me there. A short time later, at the Webster Ranch House on the opposite side of town, Steve's young wife, Mary, heard the sound of two horses stopping outside. Presently, someone approached the door. Steve! Who are you and what have you done to my husband? He's been shot, ma'am, in the shoulder. I bandaged it before I brought him here. He's going to be all right. But your mask... A mask sometimes hides the face of a friend as well as an enemy. I'm not the man who shot him, if that's what you're thinking. But what happened? That's just what I'd like to know. Mary. Oh, Steve, you're all right. How'd I get here? Who's that? A friend, Steve. He brought you home. Now I remember. My father, how is he? He's been taken to the doctor. The doctor? Was the colonel shot, too? I didn't do it, Mary. I swear it. I went over there to try to talk to him, but he wouldn't let me. And when I was leaving, three men forced their way in. Can you describe these three men? They followed me from a cafe. One, I remember, was, was older than the other two. Just as I thought, the Burks. The Burks? One of the deadliest outlaw gangs in the West. A friend and I have been trailing them for weeks. They got away with nearly $20,000. I think I winged one, though. You did. In here, Tonto. This is the friend I was telling you about. Well, Tonto, 
Me take old man to doctor. Him very bad. Might die. Oh, Steve. Doctor sent for sheriff. Think son killed old man. But I tell you, I didn't. We believe you, Steve. Go on, Tonto. Me listen in town. People very angry. Find out old man robbed. All blame Steve Webster. Talk lynch if old man die. Sheriff Rogers on way here now. Me put silver and scout in barn so sheriff not see. Nobody's well, going to hang me for something I didn't do. Wait. I've heard Sheriff Rogers is a good man. He'll see that no one takes the law into his own hands. Besides, if you run out now, everyone will surely think you're guilty. I don't know who you are, stranger, but I have a feeling you're a man I can trust. What do you want me to do? First, let me ask you a question. Is there more than one doctor in town? I know there isn't. Then I'd suggest you let the sheriff take you in. I believe I can find the Burks and the money. Kimasabi, that'd take many days. It would, Tonto, if we went after them. What do you mean? That must be the sheriff. I'd rather not have him see me yet. The bedroom. Hello, Mary. Hello, Steve. I guess you know why I'm here. You wouldn't believe me if I told you what really happened, Sheriff. So I'm not even gonna try. Not yet. Well, shall we go, Steve? Everything will be all right, darling. Sure. I'm awful sorry about this, Mary. Awful sorry. Do you really think you can help him? Yes, but I'll have to have your cooperation, Mrs. Webster. Anything you ask. I'll need some clothes. Do you have any around here I could borrow? Why, yes. You wear disguise, Kimisami? Yes, Tonto. I'm going into town. But there's so little time to spare. Why don't you try to find the Burks? I plan to, ma'am. In town? They wouldn't dare come back here. If I know the Burks, they have no choice. Get the makeup kit out of the saddlebags. What do you plan, Kimisami? I'll tell you both on the way to Crystal City. Now hurry. Listen, you need a doctor bed. Is there any other town around here except Crystal City? Only town in the whole county. Then we'll go back there and get one. No. Too risky. The doctor might talk after he leaves. Who said he'll leave? Come on, Percy. You go ahead, Sam, and I'll stay here. I'll do most anything for you, brother. But I won't trust you alone with that money. My take... Two of you to persuade the doctor to come anyhow. Sure you'll be all right, Papa? Yeah, I'll be all right. Let's go. Oh, I didn't recognize you as you came out of the bedroom, Mr. Some men call me Justice. Oh, Mr. Justice. But I simply can't understand why you want to go back into town. I better get horses and buckboard. All right, Tonto. You see, Mrs. Webster, in order to trap the Burks, it's necessary to think like the Burks. Now we have four facts to go on. First, your husband wounded one of the gang. Second, there is no other town within hundreds of miles of Crystal City. Third, there is only one doctor in Crystal City. And fourth, the Burks have never seen that doctor. Oh, well, then you're going to take Dr. Holcomb's place. But suppose the Burks don't send for a doctor. I think they will. The Burks are a family, Mrs. Webster. Any other gang might desert their wounded. But Job wouldn't desert his sons. And Sam and Purse would be helpless without their father. They'll look for a doctor. It'll be awfully dangerous going back to their hideout alone. I'll have Tonto follow me. If the West is to grow, we must get rid of outlaws like these. Ready, Mrs. Webster? Thank you. Have you been with the Colonel all the time? Hasn't he regained consciousness at all? No. If he does, he may be able to clear Steve Webster. I sincerely hope so. You look awfully tired, Doctor. Why don't you rest? I'll be glad to stay with the Colonel if you like. Well, there's nothing anybody can do except wait. <clears throat> if you don't mind... I'd be glad to help. Call me if it shows any change. Uh, you pardon me, Mr. Justice? Of course. 
He, he isn't going to die, is he? Dr. Holcomb has done everything possible for him. Try not to worry. I can't help it. When I think of Steve in that jail and all those people, I... wouldn't the Burks be here by now if they were coming? Waiting is the hardest part, Mrs. Webster. I believe our waiting is over. Oh, please be careful. Don't worry. Are you gentlemen looking for someone? Are you the doctor? Well, I've saved a few lives in my time. All right, Doc. We've been hunting all over town for you. Let's go. Well, I... Don't give us any trouble. Is that your buckboard? Yes, but... Uh... Ride ahead of us and don't try to make a getaway. Head west and turn when we say so. And hurry up. trailers, but just in case somebody saw we had a gun on him, I'll go back and keep an eye out. You all right, Papa? Yeah, I'm all right. I brought you the doc, Papa. <laughs> Good boy. All right, Doc. He's got a bullet in his side. Take it out. And if he dies, you die. Then he'll have to die. There's nothing I can do. Huh? What did you say? How do you expect a doctor to probe for a bullet without his instruments? Where's the doctor's bag, Sam? Well, I didn't even think of it. Why, you addle brain idiots! This man is in serious condition. Every moment of delay reduces his chances of recovery. Now, I'd suggest you let me take him back to town and... Uh... I give the orders around here. Sam, go back after the doctor's bag and bring it here. But what about you, Papa? Maybe I can't get up, but I can still trigger this gun. Tie the dock up and set him down at the table there so I can wash him. But do as I tell you. Look what I found sneaking up the trail. Me not sneaking. Shut up! Now what are we going to do with him? Best thing to do is plug him and be done with it. Wait. If you harm this man, I'll not lift a finger to help your friend. Stop wasting time. Tie the engine up, too. I can wash both of them. Tie him? We gotta go back for the doc's instruments. Now give me a hand. Don't try to loosen your hands, Doc. I'm watching you. With Tonto captured, the situation appeared hopeless. Then suddenly the Lone Ranger thought of a daring plan. A plan that would bring his freedom or his death. What's going on here? What are you doing? Tonto, get out of this shack. The door's open. Hold it! Shoot either of us and you'll never be able to leave here alive, Bert. You're too weak to walk. All right, Tonto. But keep us heavy. Hurry! Then this shack will rub like tinder and those flames get out of hand. There's still time for both of us to escape, Bert, but it's up to you. Well, don't let me die! Don't let me die! I'll make it over to your bedside. Untie my hands and I promise to save you. All right. Hurry up! Get me out of here! Don't let me die! Don't let me die! Get me out of here! Now hurry up, Doc! Hurry up! The flames are getting... Sam! First. I've got to get back to town before the Burks discover I'm not the real Dr. Holcomb. Clothes and mask and buckboard. Good. See that Job is taken care of. Get the money and take it to the sheriff's office. Mary. Oh, Father, you're awake. Dr. Holcomb. I thought I was dreaming. How long have you been here? Don't try to talk. But I want to talk. I've got a lot of things to say. Uh, say it later. How you feeling? I'll be all right. The important thing is, how's Steve? Steve's in jail, Colonel. They thought he shot your father. Steve? Shoot me? That's nonsense. They can't put my boy in jail. We'll for... talk about that later, too. And right now, you've got to rest. Mary. Yes, what is it? Well, 
who are you? Well, I'm Dr. Holcomb. Holcomb? I don't get this. Uh, those are two of the men who robbed me. So you're still alive, huh? What do you want? We want you, but we got a job to do first. Drop that gun, Purse. That voice. Aren't, aren't you Mr. Justice? That's right, Doctor. Would you please get some rope for these men? They're overdue at the sheriff's office. 19,060, 70, 80, 90, 20,000. It's all here, stranger, thanks to you. <laughs> Doctor tells me Job's going to recover. Long enough to join his sons at the end of a rope, anyway. Seems to me that's something else we have to thank you for. Sheriff, I'm always glad to help rid the West of men like the Burks. I guess we all owe your friends here a vote of thanks. For a lot of things. Steve, I've been a stubborn old fool. I don't know how I could have been so wrong. No more wrong than I was, Dad. Well, it's all straightened out now. By the way, Father, Steve and I have decided on a name for our baby. We're going to call him Jonathan if it's a boy. For me? Did you hear that, stranger? They're going to name the... He's gone. No, he never stays very long in one place, Colonel. I wonder who he really is. But don't you know, Mary? The Indian told me when he brought Job in. You see, justice is only one of the things he's called. Most people call him the Lone Ranger. Oh, yeah.